Hello there, and welcome back to the channel. This is Mel's Gaming here with another The Hunter Call of the Wild video. Now today's video is going to be a selection of highlight clips from the past few days, and we're starting off here on Mississippi Acres Preserve, where the first animal is going to be a little bit tricky for you guys to actually see, but we did just take a shot at it there, which did actually take it down. And as you will now see, it is another blonde piebald raccoon. Now, this one was only a level 1 female, so I wasn't really concerned about getting a good shot on it, because I do already have a few blonde piebald males, so I really didn't need a blonde piebald female for the lodge, so I wasn't too concerned about getting the medal or anything, I was just more concerned about actually getting it down. Still on the lookout for that ever-elusive albino, I have found just so many trophy raccoons in my search for an albino, but still... It eludes me. Hopefully one day I will finally find one. But moving over to Rancho del Arroyo now for the next couple of clips. And I spawned in at this outpost here on this multiplayer session and noticed that there were no need zones in this area. Since the most recent update I have noticed that there are normally whitetail and bobcats down here feeding. So I normally do come and check this area out and just see what is hanging around. And there's also quite often bighorn here. And I was scanning around and the first thing I see is some pretty big horns. And as I spot it, it is actually a level 5 bighorn. Right outside that lodge, as you will have just seen, I came straight from the lodge, came out here, started looking around. First thing I see is a level 5 bighorn. So I just had to include that like almost as a full clip of me actually coming here and spotting it. Just because it was kind of crazy to see a trophy potential animal just so quickly out of the first lodge on this map. But I did actually spend quite a bit of time waiting to get a good shot on this guy. He just didn't didn't want to give me a really good angle. So that's why there was a little bit of a cut there. Just because this is where I actually do end up taking a shot. And I figured you guys didn't need to see the couple of minutes of this ram just walking away slowly and never really giving me a shot. But as you will have seen, as soon as he did give me a shot there, the 308 did a perfect job at bringing him down nice and quickly. And he is a diamond 166.50. I cannot get a big horns, big horn sheep. For, I just really, really want to get a 170 plus, which actually have like a bigger horn style. But I just can't get one. I always get the smaller horn version of the big horns. So uh, yeah, hopefully eventually I'll be able to get a big horns, big horn for the trophy lodge. But even still, that quick out of the lodge, that was pretty cool. Now sticking here with Rancho del Arroyo. And now in front of us we do have another level 5 animal, but this time it's a level 5 peccary. The hunt for this peccary took so, so long. He is a guaranteed diamond with that 145 minimum estimate. And honestly, as soon as I could see a shot opportunity there, I just had to take it. I had been tracking this thing for absolutely forever. He just never went into a spot where I could get any kind of shot at him. So as soon as I saw that little, little opportunity there, I just had to take it. And as you will see, he is a diamond, and that shot pretty much went through everything from the 308. Really happy with that. And he's a pretty big diamond at 151.90 when 144.20 is diamond. So like I said, he was a guaranteed diamond with that 145 minimum estimate, which was something I had never seen on a collared peccary. So I just had to track him. And you can see 3.47 kilometers, which was a lot of going back and forth and back and forth and trying to let him go ahead and, you know, get nervous and then go alert, but just couldn't see him through all the brush because of these guys being so small. But when they finally crossed this sort of ravine that we just had to cross, uh, cross over once we shot him, that gave me the opportunity to finally get a shot at him and yeah, I'm so happy I managed to get him on the ground. Switching maps now and heading over to Medved Tiger where we have a 9 legendary brown bear in front of us. Now, I've only ever seen a handful of legendary brown bears in my entire time playing the game. So whenever I see that nine legendary pop up as I'm spotting a group of bears, it's always a little bit of an adrenaline rush just seeing that, that legendary pop up. It's just so exciting. The bear species in this game do just generally seem to be hard to get max levels of. So it's just always a really exciting thing to find. So I waited there for him to go alert and stand on his hind legs, which gave me a nice clear shot at his vitals there. And as you can see, he is going down nice and quickly from that shot from the 300. 
wasn't quite the heart shot I was actually looking for. I do like to make those heart shots, but it was still a single lung, more more than enough to bring him down with that vital check. And as you will see, he did actually make diamond at 27.80. He's the red brown fur type, which I do believe I already had a diamond of that fur type. But still, that's a really, really cool find. Like I said, they're just a little bit more more of an uncommon diamond. You don't see a lot of the diamond bears for black bear, brown bear or grizzly bear. So I'm always really happy to actually find one and add it to one of the lodges. Moving back over to Mississippi Acres for this next clip now. And we do actually have a nine legendary alligator walking around in front of us. Now, normally when I'm alligator hunting, I normally opt to go for a neck shot to provide an instant kill. However, in this, this circumstance, I really just couldn't get a neck shot at this guy. I spent a long time trying to get into a position to get a neck shot, and it really just wasn't happening. So, because this was actually at one of the lakes in the Gator Lakes area, in fact, this is Lake Panola, which is known for being very, very shallow, and I hope that's how you pronounce it. That's my best go at how to pronounce the name of this lake, but it is known for being incredibly shallow, and I don't know if the alligators can actually sink in this lake because it is that shallow. So, I kind of figured, okay, this isn't you know, if I don't make a neck shot, I'm not necessarily going to lose it. I always like to go for those neck shots. But in this case, I figured that I should be okay going for a long shot. So as you'll see, that first shot was right lung and thoracic vertebrae. And the second shot was double lung, thoracic vertebrae. So those hits were more than enough to bring him down really quickly. And he didn't even get into the water properly before he actually died. So I was really happy with how that worked out. Obviously, I didn't actually get spine and get, you know, that instant drop. Um, and I didn't get the neck and get the instant drop kill for this guy. But hitting the vertebrae as well as the lungs in those shots will have helped to have bring him down just that little bit quicker. So I was really happy with how that actually turned out. Now, moving over to Silver Ridge Peaks for this next clip, and I was actually hunting for rare pronghorn or trying to find some rare pronghorn for the Trophy Lodge, and I ended up finding something completely different, but something that I have wanted to find since Silver Ridge Peaks actually released. That right there is a huge looking level 5 dark fur type pronghorn. Now, I have always, always, always wanted to find a dark fur type diamond pronghorn. And I have, you know, I've hunted pronghorn quite a lot. I've had several diamonds, but just never found a dark fur type that actually even had a chance at making it. And when I saw this guy, as he was actually running away, I knew it was a level five before I even spotted it. Just look at the size of those horns. And they ended up coming back down to this lake where I had actually initially spooked this herd from. And uh, yeah, he just gave me such a perfect shot there. Dropped him on the spot. And honestly, look at this beauty. What a stunning animal. This is one of the, like, my favourite diamonds I have shot in a long time. Or potential diamonds I'd shot in a long time. And I was crossing my fingers that this guy was going to make it. I wasn't sure with that estimate that he necessarily would. But I was really hopeful because he just looked like a diamond. And picking him up, he did make it. And I was so excited to see that diamond pop up. He isn't huge, surprisingly. Even though he's got horns like that. He is 100.70 scoring. Which is not my biggest time in pronghorn by far. Which to me is crazy when he's got horns like this. But my gosh, this is my favourite diamond I've ever shot for pronghorn. What a beautiful looking animal. Isn't he just stunning? And those horns, I absolutely love this shape for the horns. I've only ever seen this this like particular style on a wonky pronghorn. And it had one of these horns and then a different horn. But just seeing the matching set on this guy, honestly, this is my like ideal diamond pronghorn. I cannot believe I managed to get this guy. He is absolutely gorgeous. Finally, a dark diamond pronghorn for the Trophy Lodge. And like I said, it's not the rares that I was looking for. It's not the big leucistic that I'd like to replace the female leucistic I've got. Or an albino to go in the Trophy Lodge. But what an awesome kill. I was so, so stoked to get that one. 
Now, moving over to Quattro Kalinas here for this next clip, and unfortunately, the animals in this clip are a bit buggy, to say the least. So you can see here, we do have some calls coming from some Iberian wolves, and I was actually heading over to this area to look for red deer, when I found this pack of wolves, and as you can see, they are unfortunately in the bugged defensive state, and there is actually N9 legendary there. Now, in case you're unaware of this bug, this is a bug that started, I think, with the most recent update, and it seems to only affect the grey wolves and the Iberian wolves in multiplayer. I haven't seen it in single player, I don't think, but it does seem to happen when in multiplayer. Now, in case you're, you've never seen this before and you're wondering what the heck is going on, I know Flinter had it as well in a recent video over on Yukon Valley with a melanistic grey wolf, and it's exactly the same bug that affects the Iberian wolves here on Quattro. So I figured, hey, you know, there's a legendary here but it's bugged. Let's make this at least a little bit interesting because I can't really just leave a max level animal there. It's not my fault that it's bugged, it's just an unfortunate bug in the game at the moment. Similar to, again, Flinter with that melanistic wolf, there's not a whole lot you can do other than just shoot them. So I figured I'd make it at least a little bit interesting with an over 50 meter iron sight shot there. And uh, yeah, the 308 did perfectly. Those iron sights were really nice and easy to use. And this guy did actually make diamond at 39, so right on requirement. And I was actually really, really happy with my shot placement with those iron sights at 50 meters. And I might do some more iron sight hunting with the ARs, just because I think the iron sights are really nice and easy to use, just in my opinion. But that was a perfect double long liver shot, which is pretty ideal. That's what I'd really want to go for in any circumstance. So I was really, really happy with that. It's a shame that the wolf was bugged, but there's not a whole lot we can do. So at least I managed to make it just a little bit more interesting. Now, sticking with Quattro Kalinas for this next clip, and I was hunting wild boar again in search of an albino, which is the only rare that I have never found for wild boar. And I thought this one, this female here, I just thought she looked a little bit different through the night vision. And I was wondering if it might be a black gold. And sure enough, shot it there with the 308, dropped her on the spot. And as we walk over to claim her, it's very obviously a black gold. Now, black gold is rare for the wild boar, but it is not a rare for the wild hogs or the feral pigs. It is specifically a rare, though, for the wild boar. I know that that's caused a little bit of confusion in previous videos where I've had these. So I thought I'd just make it nice and clear there. But yeah. It's so funny to me how I just couldn't find any rare wild boar and then I found a melanistic and a black gold on one server on Medved and now I've got three black gold wild boar. It's just really funny to me how that works out. Hopefully I'll manage to find an albino if I keep looking and yeah, fingers crossed that I can actually find one. Now, moving over to Leighton Lakes for this next clip, and I was really, really excited to find this. That is a level 2 albino Roosevelt elk bull. Now, it is unfortunate that he is just a level 2, but at least he's not, like, ridiculously tiny. He does at least have decent size antlers, and I was just really excited to finally find an albino bull. On PC, I actually had a rare of, like, all three of the rare fur types for Roosevelt Elk, but they were all cows. So I have been, for the longest time, trying to get all of the rare fur types, but as bulls, because, you know, you can use them in the multi-mounts, and they just look better on the wall than the cows. So now I have the piebald and the albino as bulls, and I just need to get a melanistic bull to actually complete that collection. I actually have two melanistic cows in the trophy lodge now, but I really would like to get a melanistic bull. I just think that that would be really cool. Really happy there, nice long shot from the 300, did its job perfectly. And this guy kind of has interesting looking antlers. Like I said, at least they're not really ridiculously tiny, he still will look good on the wall. And I really love the colour of his antlers as well and how they contrast with that bright white fur. Just a really beautiful animal and I was really, really excited to actually get this one. Just something I've been looking for for so long. The rare Roosevelt elk just do seem to be really rare, so just really happy with that. And I'm so excited to finally have one for the Trophy Lodge. Now, moving back over to Quattro Kalinas for the final clip of this video. And we have a pretty cool animal in front of us here, feeding in one of the fields. That is a level 2 albino roebuck. 
and I was so excited. I only had an albino roe doe on PC, so seeing an albino roe buck was just really exciting. And he's actually a really good sized one, so I was hoping that he would make gold. And don't ask me why, but I just got the feeling that this host wasn't kicking anyone and I just kind of felt comfortable. So I decided I wanted to actually go and try and get some pictures of this guy just because I really do love the roe deer. They're just really awesome to me. And I've said it millions of times in previous videos. I think it is because I have a lot of real life experience with roe deer. And if I saw one like this in real life, it would be so exciting to me. But just seeing one in game I got really really excited and I wanted to go and take some pictures of him so I did end up sneaking towards him there and unfortunately he did actually end up spooking off however as I was watching him through the rifle scope basically waiting to take a shot he ended up turning around and coming back to this feed zone so I figured okay I'll sneak towards him for about as much as I think I need to and then I'm gonna sort of stand up but crouched and slowly sort of crouch walk towards him and see how close I can get before he goes into that spooked animation and takes off. Because roe deer seem to be quite slow to spook and it's interesting sometimes how close you end up getting to them without even meaning to. So I figured here I would just keep going and just see how long it would actually take him to spook and try and get some really cool pictures as I was doing that. And I ended up getting some, some pictures that I'm just so incredibly happy with. And here, as you can see, he then goes into the animation and immediately takes off. So as he was feeding there, he would have gone through the stages of being attentive, alert and alarmed. And then as soon as he got into the, basically the state of fleeing is when he then lifted his head up and took off. And that's something that is a, basically you learn that behavior through spending so much time in the game and watching how animals actually react. And it's definitely something that's quite noticeable with animals when they're feeding is sometimes they won't pick their head up even once they're alert they'll just stay with their head down and i noticed that 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 this guy was actually doing that before he spooked last time so i knew that he would probably do it again and sure enough he did and i ended up getting some cracking pictures that i will share at the end of the video but now I was pretty happy with the pictures I'd gotten and I didn't really want to waste any more time in getting this guy down. So we are going to take him out with the 243 as soon as he gives us a nice shot opportunity here. He slows down, stops and I get a really nice vital hit on him there with the 243. And as you can see, he really doesn't go far before he actually falls over. What an incredible experience. And he lands really nicely as well. So I end up taking a trophy shot of him actually led in the field too. Just a really cool looking animal and again the rare roe deer do seem to be quite rare. You don't see an awful lot of them. So I was really really excited to actually get this guy and I figured his fur would actually make probably the nicest background here. And yeah he ends up making gold as well. A gold albino roebuck. How cool is that? That's honestly just what an experience as well i love those kind of moments and i know for some people it's frustrating and i get comments like girl why didn't you just shoot the animal straight away and it's like well sometimes it's nice to have a cool experience as well as a cool trophy to go in the lodge and that was definitely one of those moments it's really nice to appreciate an animal like this when it is actually still alive and doing its alive animations in game rather than when it's just stuck in a trophy lodge so I couldn't be more happy with that. In my opinion, that was an ideal hunt. And yeah, I was really, really, really stoked about the entire thing. So that is going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. Some trophies in here that I was really excited to share, especially that roe deer at the very end. That was just so, so cool to me. And I hope I hope you guys also found it cool and hopefully not too frustrating to uh, to watch me take pictures of him first. But yeah, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you guys so, so much for all your support as always. I really do appreciate absolutely everything. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.